580720E. The placing of beacons, Jeffersonville, Indiana, USA. And that is that the first is a placing some deacons into the church. And our little church here is sovereign. It doesn't have any denomination or anything to send its deacons. It elects its own deacons. It elects its pastor. It elects its trustees. It elects everything that comes in and out of the church. No one person has a say so over anything. It's the church. And the church are those who come and support the church with their presence, with their tithe and offerings, are always the ones that has legal say so in the placing of such. And I want to thank the past board of deacons and I say it from here for all the church. If any of those brethren are here, which was Brother Cox, Brother Fleeman, and Brother Higginbotham, and Brother Ditzman, they have given us a good service. Give the Lord in this tabernacle. And every so often, according to the bylaws of the church, every year the deacons or trustees automatically fill their time. And if they want to come back, all right, if they do not want to come back, then they can place some in their places that this board has designed. And the other night, I called the trustee board, which there is a new board of trustees. I noticed Brother Luther McDowell here tonight. We are so glad to have him in, which was formerly on the trustee board. I went down this week to find out and to check into having a photostatic copy made, which will be presented to the church also, that the trustees of the church now is Brother William Morgan, Brother Mike Egan, and Brother Bankswood, and Roy Robertson, and they are all of this city, except Brother Robertson, who lives between the two cities. The Lord has seen fit in those men, and they have been honorable men, and they have now received the duty as trustees of this church. And then while this meeting was going on and was told by the assistant pastor we, that we, to electing of a new board of deacons, that these had served their time out and resigned. Then it was to select some more deacons. Now the church, the way this is done, is the board can appoint deacons, man that they have associated with and found to be honorable and just man. The office of a deacon is a very great office and a great honor to the Lord to be a deacon in the church. And so, in the meeting the other night, certain man was called out to me, and when meeting was meeting with the pastor, the following, this last Friday, which was agreed by this man that these were honorable and just man. One young man that, exa that they had found was not exactly qualified, be not because that he wasn't the right type of man, one that was suggested by one of the honorable men among a trustee board. But as the pastor and I came together, I asked the age of the young man. He was in his early 20s, honorable, just, and a real man. But find out that he was a single man. The Bible requires a deacon to be a married man. He must be the husband of one wife. And then another, ma ma and then another man, which was a very honorable man, very qualified for the job, and would have made a loyal man as a brother suggested him. Then after investigating the case that the brother had just recently come into this faith, his wife doesn't believe in it. Then that disqualified the man at the office because he must have all his family in subjection. They must be also in the faith because it would be a conflict. And we're building now and we wish to place this church. And as the general overseer of the church, I must see that it's kept scripturally everything right to the on the word and so therefore then it has been found favorable with the board and the pastor and the overseer to select in this group of people here some man who we think to be honorable and just man we can only bring them and it's then they are appointed by the church by their own vote and then these men shall serve if they feel that they will accept this office then they will come for a short time to see if they feel that maybe god that that maybe God has called them, and if later if they feel that they are disqualified, then they have a right in the next few weeks to resign the office that someone else could have appointed in their place. However, at the beginning of the revival, that if God willing, I want to hold here in this tabernacle, as soon as I get some rest, then I, then I, we will ordain these deacons by laying on hands, deacons and treasurer in this church, but first they must be appointed and see how they like it and how the congregation likes it. Then if it's then 
if it's all right on both sides, then we make these men ordained deacons just like trustees are elected the same way. It's a sovereignty and the law of the church by the word of God, therefore, that they just can't say that I think this man will be a right man. That isn't it. Brother Neville thinks this man will be a right man, or the trustee board thinks this man will be a right man. It has to be by the church. No one does anything within himself here. It's the vote of the church. It's a sovereign church. The old set of bylaws was destroyed in the 1937 flood. We have recopied those and we will hang on the wall here soon the duties of trustees, deacons, treasurers, and so forth, pastor, associates, and so forth. By the grace of God, it has been said to me, and a 100% vote through the board of this church, that they have found that Brother Holly and Hickerson to be a just, honorable man, and in line in this position to receive the great honor of being a deacon of this say tabernacle. Also we have found, and by the vote of the board, that Brother Collins also has been found an honorable and just man, being a minister himself, therefore we would ask him to come and to be a deacon of the church, and not only deacon, but an associate to Brother Neville, and perhaps to a Sunday school class, or to take the place of Brother Neville, whatever is being called on him to be an associate to Brother Neville. That's Brother Collins. And also the church has found in favor that Brother Tony Zabel, an honorable and just man, has been found favored before the trustee board and the pastors to ask him to receive the office of deacon in this tabernacle. And it's also been asked and found an honorable man among us, not these not being the on honorable men now, but just has been selected by the board Brother Taylor from Henryville or Memphis, I believe it is Memphis, Indiana. He's been with us for some time, acting as usher and whatever could be. That the church has found favor with him or the board and pastors that he would accept the great office as being the deacon of this say tabernacle. And it's also been asked that Brother Mike Egan, son in law, Brother Bob Hand, has been selected by the board and by the pastors to accept the office as treasurer of this tabernacle, which is an honorable job and requires justice and honor. In doing this, I think, my brethren, that calling you from here, that it would be a great honor to you, and not only that, but something to do. At this time, I have, I will have Brother Neville, our associate, read the requirements of the deacon. Brother Neville, if you'll read it from the Word of God, Brother Neville reads First Timothy 3, 8 to 13. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy, or filthy looker, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so, must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For they have used the office of a deacon well to themselves a good degree and a great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. I would at this time ask these brethren who has been called if they would just walk forward here to the platform just a moment. And as we bow our heads just a moment for prayer, I want them and the church knows what this is that this is electing your deacon board and your treasurer. Lord Jesus, it is with sober, godly thinking that we come to thee now. We come in respect to thy most holy word. We come believing that eh, let every man's word be wrong, but God's be true. And we are grateful to thee for this church which Jesus Christ has purchased with his own precious blood and has given us this building to worship in. And as the overseers of this great flock, which the Holy Ghost has ordained us to be, we are trying now to present to this congregation a loyal, righteous bunch of men that we believe to be fruit filled and ready for the office. As it is once said concerning the deacon board, go look out yourself among you, man of good reports, and with the Holy Spirit, that they might serve in this matter to take care of the widows and orphans, to distribute the money and to take and to care for the welfare of the church. Later in years, 
We have just read the writing of that great inspired Saint Paul who sets forth the declaration of the scriptures of the requirements of such positions. God honor this man and now it is a choice Lord as a servant church as a body of the Lord Jesus that they do the electing end and will direct this portion of the service in a special way in that righteous and holy name of Jesus. Now with our heads bowed, not only our heads but our hearts and as every member of this church that comes here regular and supports it with the tithes and offerings which is considered a member of this church while the pastor and I alone looks, the associate pastor Brother Neville and I look on. I would ask if this church finds Brother Taylor to be a just man and eligible by the best of your thinking to be a deacon over this group of people. You will signify the same by raising your hand by the Branham poses. All right, if now if there is any contrary, would you raise your hand by the Branham poses? Thank you. Does any of these members of this church here find and all do you find Brother Holin Hickerson to be a just and honorable man and a man that's found in your sight worthy to become the deacon of this said church? Would you signify by raising your right hand by the Burnham pauses? If it is contrary, then raise your hand by the Burnham pauses. Does this congregation find Brother Collins to be the same, righteous and honorable man and worthy of the job of being deacon of this church? Would you raise your hand? By the Burnham pauses, all right. Contrary, would you raise your hand? By the Burnham pauses, does this congregation find Brother Tony Zebul to be an honorable man and worthy of this office of being deacon over this flock in this said church? Would you raise your right hand? Brother Burnham pauses, contrary, would you raise your hand? Brother Burnham pauses, does this congregation feel that Brother Harnard is a just and righteous man? who has been with us for some time to be the treasurer, secretary, treasurer of this church, to handle its finances and to pay its bills. If so, raise your right hand by the Burnham pauses. Is there any contrary? Raise your right hand by the Burnham pauses. I wish to say to the brethren who are standing at this present time at the foot of this cross that this church, with 100%, no contrary at all, finds you all worthy, in the sight of God for this office that God has called you. Now you are said, let these first be tried and see if they desire this office. Within a few weeks, God willing, I will return back to lay hands upon this group of men to make them the official trust or the deacons of this church and treasurer. Let us bow our heads just a moment. Lord, we are happy tonight that there is man still living on the earth that can walk godly before the world. So godly that a tabernacle would strict rules as this one has can vote five men into position as their leaders without one vote contrary. We are happy for them and we feel that you were with us in making these decisions, the board and we pastors. God bless these men and may they serve this office with all their heart knowing that it is purchasing to them a great degree in heaven. Someday when the books of heaven shall be closed, may the book of the celestial beings and in the great book of heaven be opened may their names be 100 percent before god and the savior and all the heavenly host to be the same in his kingdom bless them lord and may they serve this office well in jesus name we thank you for them amen i just want to shake your hands brother Hanid, and brother zabel and brother collins brother hickerson and brother taylor so happy to know that we have fellowshiped all this time with such honorable man god bless you now and we will see you right away as soon as i get a little rest to get back and see how you like your office all right by their vote i think was 100 percent no contrary at all oh aren't you glad that you're associating with people today who can live before god godly and live before this present world in that condition it is a wonderful thing and I'm so glad to know tonight that I have the privilege of having this man and this church to be my friends. I'm so glad that God let me associate myself with this church all over the world. Oh, they are despised and rejected and talked about. And as I said this morning in my message, maybe just mud dubbers. The way the world looks at them as a bunch of fanatics, but God looks at them as his children. I'm so happy for that. They might not 
be able to tell you how many miles it is to the moon. They might not be able to tell you all the solar system and how it operates. But there's one thing they do know. They know the hour they were born again. I'm so glad for them. And there's a little parable that I learned and I'm going to associate it tonight with my two little girls to kind of make it come home to us. To make it real to us that you would understand the meaning of it. One morning, raising up out of bed, I got two little girls. One of them is Rebecca and one of them is Sarah. And their daddy's little girls. And I've got a little boy, Joseph. I was coming from Chattanooga out of a meeting one night while I was there in this last campaign. And I was in the car going along with my older son, Billy. His wife and Mida was in the car and the, two, and the girls. And as we were rolling along, nobody had said nothing for several city blocks. And I had cut pretty hard on the people that night about the way they were doing. And nobody had said anything. And little Joseph came over and grabbed me by the shoulder. He said, Daddy, you sure did preach tonight. And this morning as I was leaving and going up to 8th and 10th Street, or Penn and 10th rather, nobody had said a thing. The wife and the two girls and little Joseph took a hold of my shoulder again. He said, Daddy, that I sure liked that preaching this morning. He said, I said, well, I've got one son, that's my son. And to a little thing, up one morning sitting in the room, little Becky come running out and see. She straddled my leg and put her arm around me. And she's that daddy little girl. And she was hugging me. And little Sarah jumped out of bed with her little pajamas and would say, come, running next. And the little brown-eyed one. Little Becky would say, oh, Sarah, there's no need of you coming because I've got all of daddy's myself. That is all mine. And little Sarah with her, her little lips dropped down, her little brown eyes covered up. I motioned like this and stuck out the other knee and she came and straddled it. Becky got longer legs so they would reach the floor. Little Sarah was toddling. So I put both arms around Sarah Little Sarah looked over to Becky and said, Becky, you may have all of daddy, but daddy got all of me. And I think that's the way it is here. We might not know all of the theology and all the great Greek words this group of people might not know, but there is one thing sure I believe. Jesus has got all of us. Amen. All right, Father Neville.